Hey, how's it going, everyone? Welcome back to Dueling Sabers, episode number four. Today is the 27th of October 2020, and there is a bit of news to get to today, but not as anything as earth-shattering that you might expect. However, one of the biggest problems of this particular podcast that I'm doing is that uh, some days it's going to be a little bit light, but there is are things to talk about, which is going to be pretty cool. Never mind, maybe a little bit of controversy on a couple of things here. A couple of things are going to have a bit of controversy on it. So I thought we'd start off with the with the with the biggest one, with the biggest thing right now, and that of course is uh, StarWars.com putting out this tweet today: "Make your voice heard," and they want you to vote. That's right, folks. StarWars.com through Disney PR, who also did this with Marvel and other subsidiaries is urging you to get out the vote. They want you to go out. They want you to vote. They want you to make your voice heard. However, um, let's look at this again here. So uh, what what exactly is, well, what is it that we're seeing? If you're listening to this in the podcast form, uh, the image says vote. The O is the rebellion logo symbol, uh, not the empire symbol. And And a lot of people are interpreting that to mean, well, go and vote against the empire, go and vote against fascism, go and vote against imperialism, vote for the resistance, vote for the rebellion. And obviously part of that is going to tie into, well, quite frankly, people's personal politics. And there are people in the response to this tweet that are, oh man, they are not happy. They are not happy that Star Wars is getting political, that in their mind, Star Wars is going woke. But if you listen to like a certain subsect of Star Wars fandom out there, especially on YouTube and on Twitter. I'm not going to say their name. They're not worth my time anymore. They're going to complain about this. They're going to claim that that it clearly is coded messaging designed to uh, get you to vote for a particular blue-backed presidential candidate versus someone who might be more red. And uh, I mean, there are there are going to be some comparisons made here if you look at it from like the blue and the red states, that kind of thing, right? Blue lightsaber, red lightsaber. I mean, you know, we politicize everything in this country, but that is one of those things. I thought that was kind of funny. However, look, I want you to vote too. I don't care who you vote for. Well, okay, I do care who you vote for, but I'm not going to tell you who to vote for. I have my own personal politics. Those who follow me on Twitter, when you should, at mjarbo, uh, you guys probably know my politics, and I'm sure many of you out there have unfollowed me or unsubscribed from me simply because our politics don't mesh, and that's okay, too. I'm totally okay with that one, but at least they're not beating you over the head with it, and that is something that I can, in fact, uh, respect in this moment. I know uh, looking at this image here, a lot of people are, I think, going to get a little bit on the mad side, but that is okay. You know what I mean? That's that's absolutely fine. And I think uh, as we as we make our way through this particular next week, as crazy as it's going to be, we're going to see um, a lot of, uh, oh, there's going to be a lot of crazy that comes down the pipeline. So just get ready for that. But the other thing that came out today that I wanted to briefly touch upon here is uh, the uh, honest trailer for the Mandalorian. They dropped this nice little uh, trailer for it where they uh, opted to do, um, I don't know why it's not working on my end. There we go. Um, (laughs) Okay. Anyway, there we go. And now it's working. But uh, they dropped this nice little cool uh, trailer, uh, you know, honest trailer thing for it. it, And it does kind of poke fun at Disney Star Wars. It pokes fun at at the sequel trilogy, it pokes fun at a lot of stuff, but it's it's rather optimistic in regards to how they approach Star Wars, and uh, and that's actually nice to see in this day and age. It wasn't tearing Mandalorian apart; it had a little bit of fun poking at it, but that was really about it. And so, this is a kind of satire that I enjoy when it's more lighthearted versus quite literally. Uh, anything else, which sometimes they can get a little bit cynical. Sometimes they can get a little bit mean. And I think when it comes to the conversation surrounding Star Wars, especially online, this is where we find ourselves having these kind of conversations. So I just really enjoyed it. I thought it was good. Uh, it's like six and a half minutes long. So it's a pretty long, honest trailer, but, uh, it's definitely worth your time. If you are looking 
to uh, to see something a little bit different and to have a, a little bit of fun. So I also wanted to uh, touch upon, uh, again, that's kind of the news stories for the day, uh, so to speak. But what we do have here is this cool tweet uh, from Phil uh, Sostek. Who says here that on uh, this of this on this first of many hashtag Mando Mondays, the fully painted Hasbro vintage collection Razor Crest is revealed and it looks amazing. Uh, you can even strip the Mandalorian ships for parts like a Jawa. Get on over and order yours before this HasLab campaign is over. And he attaches a bunch of images here. Like we get to see the uh, the Razor Crest with uh, Mando and Baby Yoda. It's a uh, definitely a decently sized Razor Crest. It looks incredibly detailed. There's a nice picture here showing Mando inside of the uh, of the storage bay, complete with the toilet. They've got the toilet in there that was referenced uh, in the first episode. And uh, that's a nice little Easter egg, a nice little, a nice little thing there. And then you can see here, there's another breakdown of the uh, the different parts are going to be able to strip. It looks like it's mostly just cosmetic. It's not the, of course, inner workings of the Razor Crest, but you know, cockpit parts of the whole uh, things along those lines, uh, engine com uh, engine panels, things like that. And then they've also got uh, a little pod for for Mando himself to stay in, which is uh, pretty cool. It's all really detailed. It looks very, very, very nice. And that actually is uh, is coming in from the HasbroPulse.com, uh, their website here, the HasLab. I'm not too familiar with what this is. I've never actually heard of the HasLab before, but okay. So this is the Star Wars Vintage Collection Razor Crest. Um, they were looking for 6,000 backers. They've gotten 12,628 so far, so it's entirely funded. Um, you can uh, you can get yours if you want for another 13 days, 7 hours, and 53 minutes. And right now, it's got a current running price of approximately uh, $350. My God, $350 is, is a lot of money for this Razor Crest. But I mean, look, this like, I mean, come on. Look at this thing. It is it is so damn sexy. I can't even begin to describe how sexy this thing is. Like I, like I'm not a toy collector, man, but like the more I look into some of the star Wars stuff, the more I'm like, yeah, I want to get my hands on it. Cause it looks so freaking cool. So again, it's $350. That is entirely, uh, for you guys to get your hands on. If you want, you might, you might enjoy it. You might not, I'm not too sure, but either way, I thought we would also take a quick look here at, uh, at what's going on with uh, Walt Disney World News Today, WDWNT.com has got a uh, whole new article about new merch that's available over at Galaxy's Edge. Limited release, Dejaric Jumbo Pin, Oga's Cantina Coaster Pin Set, and more. And this is at the Disneyland uh, Resort. It's I love how it says Disneyland Resort here, but, but you can't get into Disneyland Resort. It's not open. Unless maybe it is now and I haven't heard, but I figured by now I would have heard that it's open. Either way, uh, you know, there's this interesting uh, youth t-shirt here. There's a lot of merch. When I was there at, at Galaxy's Edge last year, I shot a lot of B-roll footage, which I should really put that together. So if you guys want to see all that B-roll footage that I shot at Galaxy's Edge last year, let me know. I'll start compiling it and putting it up here on the show, uh, or at least linking it to another channel. So, uh, but I, I, I talked a lot. Uh, well, I, I noticed there was a, a, a buttload of merch and it kind of felt like there was like a mall. You know, like half of Galaxy's Edge was basically just a shopping center, which it is. And some of the stuff was cool and some of the stuff was kind of lame. Um, but this U shirt looks to be all right. It's kind of simple, but it's 25 bucks. Uh, very simple looking. You can get this limited release hollow chest, the Jarek jumbo pin for 60. That actually does look pretty cool. I think that'd be a lot of fun uh, to have that. I don't know why I'd like it, but I do. This is where my inner nerd starts to go. I want it. I want it. I want it. I want it. And then it's always like, can I afford it? And the answer to that is it's $60. So, so it's up to you if you can afford it, but it looks fantastic. Uh, then you've also got the galaxy's edge skyline pin for $13, which I mean, it's a, it's a, it's a, it's, that was the thing. They really tried pushing like the skyline of galaxy's edge. They really did a lot of marketing with the skyline and they add the Millennium Falcon and a lot of that stuff. Um, this doesn't have any Millennium Falcon on it. It's like, okay, it's $13. I mean, if you're a diehard collector, like you have to have everything that's going to be in Disneyland and Galaxy's Edge, then this would be for you. But otherwise, it's kind of, eh, you know, whatever. It's just, it's a pin. Uh, but there are a lot of people out there that like it. Oh, it does open up and it says Bright Suns. I don't know what, okay. Uh, you can get an Oga Cantina's pin uh, coast or coaster pin set. For $28, which looks pretty, you know, all right. 
Uh, again, the people who like to collect the pins, this is all for you. If you like Star Wars pins, you're going to like all this stuff. It looks okay, but I wouldn't spend 28 bucks on it to be. Well, okay. Looking at the zoomed in photos of it, uh, the one with the Ewok is pretty uh, d adorable. Uh, the one with the um, the axes looks pretty cool. And then, of course, uh, the Fanta uh, or Bantha uh, looks pretty great. And so I'm, I'm, I, that could be kind of cool. The one with the drink, though, for Ogus Cantina. I don't care about a martini glass with a lime in it, but, uh, you know, make it something cool, right? And, uh, you know, make it something cool, but uh, 28 bucks, I don't, I don't know how I feel about that one, to be honest with you. And so, actually, at this point, you can get those items right now uh, at the Star Wars Trading Post in the downtown Disney district. So that's, so that's at Disneyland. Downtown Disney is open. You can go and get those for, for holidays. Uh, if anyone out there is, is headed down that direction, Hit me up, you know, hit me up. Maybe, uh, maybe I, I might feel like I'll, I'll slide you the 60 bones for that pin, you know, right? Like that could be something we could work out. Cause I wouldn't mind getting that, uh, that hollow chest pin. That'd be pretty cool. And that 60 bucks is a bit expensive, but at the same time, it's kind of like my inner nerd is like, I want it. I want it. I want it. So let's, let's talk about more quick things here. Uh, if you are a fan of star Wars and you have some money to burn before the release of new consoles in this con in this holiday season, uh, they have a, a little article here over on Pure Xbox. So if you're a Star Wars fan, they have a Mandalorian sale from, from October 27th today through November 3rd, which is going to give you a wide variety of uh, games for a, a fair price, actually. Lego Star Wars 2, the original trilogy, five bucks. Lego Star Wars 3, the Clone Wars, five bucks. Lego Star Wars, the complete saga, five dollars. I don't know why you would probably get, well, the original trilogy is on the Xbox and the three, but they play on the Xbox one as well. You can get Battlefront, the original, for five bucks, as well as Battlefront 2. We're talking the 2003 and 2005 original, original games. Uh, you can get the Ultimate Edition for Xbox One for the original Battlefront from 2015 or the new Battlefront for, uh, for 10. Battlefront 2, 20 bucks. That's a good deal. Jedi Academy is five bucks. That's not bad. Jedi Fallen Order is 30 bucks. You can get Knights of the Old Republic for five bucks. That's not bad at all. Star Wars Squadron down to $29.99 from $39.99, which is a good price. And of course, if you want to get your hands on the Force Unleashed and the Force Unleashed 2, both of those are just five bucks. Yesterday, I talked about the rumored release or the rumored development of the Force Unleashed 3. So if you if you listened yesterday and you're feeling somewhat nostalgic and you've got an Xbox, uh, you want to get it for five bucks a pop, that's what you can do. And so those are some decent prices for some of those games. I don't, I mean... Uh, we're, oh, sorry. Republic Commando is five bucks as well. That's the one I'm going to pick up because I haven't played Republic Commando in 15 years. And quite frankly, that game was too good. It was too fantastic. And it, it just Lucas, LucasArts did not support that game in the way that they should have. Uh, EA should absolutely take that run with it. Disney should let them do it. Uh, you know, put the guys from Respawn who did Titanfall on a new Republic Commando game. Do it, make it happen, make my life complete. Even though Jedi Fallen Order was amazing, uh, their first person games are pretty, pretty kick ass as well. So, all right. And then uh, also here, quickly looking over, we've got the Amazon one day uh, deal on a uh, Star Wars. This is for a holiday. You get some Funko Pops for a decent price here. Uh, Millennium Falcon with Han Solo is $39. If you want to get the deluxe Star Wars Battle at Echo Base series, it's uh, 18 bucks roughly. There's, and there's different ones here. If you want to get Han Solo and Carbonite or Cal Kestis with BD-1 uh, or Vader in a meditation chamber, like these are, none of these are like really kind of like, you know, like uh, eh, they're okay, but it's like you figure, I know they're they're doing this because Mando's coming out here in a couple of days, but you figure they would, you know, where, where are the Mando ones? Give me some Mando ones. I, I'd buy the Mando ones. I don't have those yet, but uh, they got the Black uh, Hasbro deals here for the Black series. You can get uh, some decent ones here. Like uh, the Rebel Trooper on Rebel Trooper on Hoth for fourteen, uh, the Black Series Chewbacca C three PO for thirty five, the Celebrate uh, or Star Wars Celebrate the Saga Toys Bounty Hunter figure set. What's on this one? Let me just look at this one here real quick. Uh, you can get um, wow, there's a fair amount of them there. Okay, so uh, you get you know Boba Fett, Jango Fett, uh, Bosk IG eighty eight, and then this little droid whose names I can never really remember, uh, and that of course is. Um, a five pack for kids ages four and up. Uh, and uh, right now it looks like it's uh, 25 bucks. It's not bad. That's not a bad deal at all. If you are looking to get your hands on any of that stuff. So really what we're looking at here 
is uh you know a lot of a lot of stuff's on sale you know they always do this new merch they always do new merch i'm going to talk about new merch when it comes out because for one this is some stuff i wouldn't mind investing my own money into additionally there's some cool things in there worth talking about there's some cool things in there that might uh that might interest you that you may want to get as we come into the holiday season and i know i kind of feel like a corporate shill for disney when it's all like all right ladies and gentlemen welcome to star wars merchandise part of the podcast when there's not a lot of other stuff to talk about that ends up being a thing. But I do want to quickly, uh, as a quick side point here, one of the things I want to do with this podcast is I want to look at some of the op-eds that come out, because there's always op-eds, opinion pieces that are coming out about Star Wars, especially as we go through The Mandalorian, as we go through the next season, and then beyond that into what's going to be you know, taking its time until 2023 for the movies. Uh, I'm going to look at a lot of those op-eds and, and provide my own commentary on them, because I feel... And that could be an interesting way of furthering the discussion. And if you guys find anything you want me to look at, you can always hit me up on Twitter, Adam Jarbo. You can always uh, join the Facebook group, facebook.com uh, forward slash groups forward slash three buck theater, or leave it in the comment section. We can go from there. Uh, so let's quickly talk about here. We've got the Star Wars High Republic comic book line. This is one of the uh, elements that's going to be uh, coming out when they finally release the High Republic series, which was supposed to come out back in August. If you, you know, you know about that. But then they pushed it to January 6, 2021. We know that Charles Soule's uh, novel, you can already read the first chapter of that. They're going to be doing a bunch of young adult stuff. Uh, one of those books just recently got out too. one of those uh, not for like not for release print copies that they make got out at like a thrift store. So that's floating around in the wild. But I uh, never heard any spoilers coming out. So that's pretty cool. And I do look forward to reading this. Absolutely. So uh, here's what we know about this. Star Wars, The High Republic, issue one out of six. So it's only going to be a six issue run, uh, which makes a lot of sense because they're not, you know, they, they want to keep these stories contained and, and release them relatively in phases. So this is what it says. A new era of Star Wars stellar telling begins. It's centuries before the Skywalker saga, the Jedi are at their height, protecting the galaxy as Republic pioneers push into new territories as the frontier prepares for the dedication of the majestic starlight beacon. Padawan Keeve Trennis faces the ultimate choice. Will she complete her Jedi trials or rescue the innocent from disaster? New Jedi, new ship, new evils to fight. Ships are going to be in shops January 6, 2021. It's rated T for teen, which should be interesting. Because that to me says that they uh, that it's going to be a little bit on the more I don't want to say mature side, but it's going to not be like you know Star Wars Forces of Destiny or whatever the hell that crap is. I'm not a fan of it. It doesn't interest me. But this looks kind of cool. I'm looking forward to really diving into the adult novels, the young adult novels, and the comics of the High Republic to to really kind of flesh out that world. So if you guys if you guys are also going to get in on that one, let me know. That could be a lot of fun. All right. And so real quick, I just want to touch upon this tweet I saw from Junis. Uh, Suotemo, who plays Chewbacca, has been since The Force Awakens back in 2015. He simply just said this morning, I will never get tired of making the Chewbacca noise. Don't believe me. Just ask my family. And <laughs> the reason why I wanted to talk about this tweet, the reason why I wanted to bring it up, has everything to do with the fact that we all love making the Chewbacca noise. We all, I'm terrible at it. I think is I'm like, <laughs> it sounds like a goat. That's my Chewbacca. It's terrible. I can never do it right. Someone's going to clip that out too, I swear to God. But anyway, uh, and it, what, but another reason why I wanted to touch uh, talk about it has a lot to do with the fact that I just, I love that a Star Wars actor is still speaking highly of the franchise. You know, Boega has had his complaints and they're valid complaints. They're justified complaints. The cast came out and they defended him. I completely, I'm, I'm with that. I, I get it a hundred percent, but it's nice to just see someone come out and go like, I still love Star Wars. And I just think that to me is wonderful because I feel so much of the fan base is bathed in negativity. And I look, I'll be negative on this podcast too. If something I don't like comes up, I'm going to talk about it. And that's just going to be the reality of it. However, I'm still always going to come at things from as positive of a slant as humanly possible. That's always just, that's just how I am when I talk about things that I love. So when it comes to Star Wars, that's not going to change. However, uh, speaking of loving something in Star Wars, we got a really interesting little thing. Uh, actually from someone unexpected. And I'm not going to lie, this this kind of cracked me up here. Uh, Kanye West appeared on the Joe Rogan experience the other day, and there was a brief exchange about his love of Star Wars, specifically which trilogy he loves the most and which trilogy 
he ain't that big of a fan of. And just listen to this clip. One thing I want to say, like, and this is about to make me mad right here. The first time you can see me get mad in the interview. They said that George Lucas's prequels are worse than the corporate made Disney Star Wars. I'll get mad at that too. Like that, that's fucking ridiculous. <laughs> Revenge of the Sith. We saw how Darth Vader was made. Yeah. Like I watched that like ten times during COVID. <laughs> like, don't jump, Anakin. No. I got the high ground. Those <laughs> early movies were pure. Yeah. Yeah. They were pure. The, yeah. I'm, no, no. I'm saying even the prequels are better than anything that and i'm sorry disney star wars design team i know you're gonna like put my face up in the you know office and be like forget cut no man this is george this is his baby that thing was set in his heart to show us as children the hero's journey mm -hmm. you know and these these like yeah it's he's right he's right as much as i'm not a fan of kanye but he's right in this particular sense Lucas had a story to tell. Lucas knew what he wanted to say. Whether or not he succeeded in telling that story really does kind of, you know, fall on the person experiencing it. Uh, there are a lot of people out there who simply don't like The Phantom Menace, but they love Revenge of the Sith. They go, Revenge of the Sith is one of my favorite movies of all time, but I hate The Phantom Menace. And it's like it shows you that evolution of storytelling and, and how George felt more confident in himself in Revenge of the Sith to tell that story. I honestly feel like The Phantom Menace would do better if it, if it was treated as, I don't want to say realistically, but maybe as maturely as Revenge of the Sith did. I think, I think it, would be, it would be perceived a different way. I think there was a huge tonal shift from Phantom to Attack of the Clones. And I really do love all three movies. Uh, I have my problems with the Phantom Menace, but I will still, you know, I'll find myself watching it and not caring. I'll, I'll go, oh, this is far, it's cringy. Ah, but then I'm not going to sit there and go, oh, it's terrible. I'm never going to watch it again. No, it's Star Wars. Of course, I'm going to watch it again. I'm looking forward to when my kids are old enough to, to watch it and to enjoy it so I can show it to them. And that's the thing, too, is like the prequel trilogy has grown on people. It has grown on people. I remember 99, 02, and 05 when, every, when people were losing their minds over Star Wars. It's bad. It's terrible. It's god-awful. But here it is, all of these years later, over 20 years later, at least in the case of The Phantom Menace, and we are now talking about these movies in more of a positive light, which, is, which has brought me to that question before about whether or not uh, we would see something, you know, or whether or not in 20 years people are going to look at the last Jedi and go, I was completely, uh, I was completely mistaken with that movie. It's actually really good. I was just wrong. I don't see myself necessarily doing that, but maybe I'll be a little bit more appreciative of certain elements of it, which is on my own personal note. And, and I've talked about this quite a bit before on singular videos, but for newcomers, I didn't care for the narrative structure of that movie, but I thought it was well directed, well acted. And the special effects were amazing. The score was, was top tier dynamite. John Williams, like aesthetically, I love everything about that movie. Aesthetically, it's just the story that I had massive issues with. And then, of course, the like the forcing of of trying to cram two movies into one for the Rise of Skywalker just ended up really kind of being a problem. So now that's done. Now that's over. Now we can move on and move on to something else. And I think that's where we're going to be OK. So I just wanted to showcase the Kanye bit because he's right. He's 100 percent right on that one. You know, he's got his love. George had a story to tell. And I think Disney gets that now, which is why The Mandalorian is as important as it is, and which is why the future of the franchise is going to be stemming off The Mandalorian in regards to, to Disney Plus content uh, right around that time, and as well as Cassie and Andor. We're probably going to get a little bit more room to play around in that sandbox of a timeline as well. But then Rebels um, and, uh, and Clone Wars with Bad Batch and stuff like that, I think we're going to get a lot of time to play in those worlds. And that's really a Dave Filoni thing, because Filoni is going to be... You know, I think the younger generation, I think he's going to be uh, their George Lucas. You know, they'll always know George, but when they get to know Dave is when they're going to go, oh, awesome, cool, man. Like, I'm really happy with this. So, again, something there to just consider as you as you look at Star Wars going forward, uh, if you are finding yourself maybe a little bit, you know, wondering about the future and where things are going to go. But anyway, guys, I just wanted to uh, talk today about Star Wars. I, uh, it was a fun 25 minutes. I thank you guys very much for tuning in. If you made it this far, do me a solid. Type uh, Sabers in the chat. I like to ask people that so I know you guys made it. And uh, if you're listening to this on the iTunes podcast world, uh, please be sure to leave a review. 
or come over to youtube.com forward slash Reebok Theater and leave a comment there. I will talk to everyone later. Have yourself a great day. I'll see you all tomorrow.